Hey everyone, Steve Losh here with another episode of Sunday School. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be talking about uh, calibrating uh, focus adjustment for digital SLR lenses. So, uh, SLR autofocus systems are really good, but they're not perfect. Sometimes they'll focus, you know, uh, behind or in front of the object, and a lot of lenses will do that consistently. Like a lens will be consistently focusing too far in front or too far behind. And so, um, modern SLRs, or at least some of the higher end ones, will let you calibrate this and adjust that autofocus to compensate for that on a lens by lens basis. So I just got a new lens yesterday, uh, 200 millimeter f2.8, f2 and I haven't adjusted yet so I figured I'd do that and film it so that you guys could see how it works. Uh, so what I got here is my, uh, just my SLR set up on a tripod. It's very important, uh, you'll need a tripod for this. Um, and I, So I'm in the calibration screen you can see here. Um, like I said, you can apply just to a single lens at a time. And so I can apply, you know, an adjustment of 0 0.4, 0 0.5, all the way up to plus 10, and in the opposite direction. I forget which way is which, but it doesn't really matter for the reason, for reasons you'll see in a second. Um, so right now I'm just going to leave it at uh, zero. And I'm going to press OK to save. OK. Um, so what I got here, as you can see, um, I got my camera on a tripod. And I've got this little test sheet of paper. This is just a normal sheet of paper that I drew some lines on. Um, so you can do this. You don't need any fancy tools for this. It's just a normal sheet of paper. Uh, you need to draw a straight line across the middle horizontally. That line has to be straight, so get out your ruler. Um, and then the vertical line is just to aid in uh, focusing, so don't worry about the vertical line at all. But then what you do is you bend the paper into kind of a Z shape, or S, depending on which way you look at it, um, so that we're, what we're going to do is focus right here in the center, or tell the camera to focus in the center, and then we're going to take a picture, and we're going to see where the camera actually focuses. If it focuses further back, this part will be in focus, and the center will be blurry. If it focuses too far forward, this part's going to be blurry, and this part's, sorry, this part's going to be uh, sharp, and this part's going to be blurry, right? Um, and so it's important to make sure that this is straight, in the same plane as your camera, otherwise, you know, part of, you know, half this line in the center is going to be blurry and half is going to be uh, sharp. So you want it to be straight on the same plane, uh, and it should also be vertically aligned with your camera, so, you know, grab some books and stack it up, um, or change your tripod height, whatever you want, just make sure everything's nice and level. Um, and then you're also going to want a notebook to record your results, especially if you're doing this for more than one lens. Um, you want to do them correctly. Uh, okay, so settings on your camera. Um, use the widest aperture you have, and other than that, uh, the settings don't matter. So, you know, take a couple test shots. That one looks fairly good. I don't know how much you can see, but uh, the histogram was good. So just get the widest aperture and change your other settings. I would use the lowest ISO, um, and then just change the shutter speed until you get a reasonable exposure. Um, the other thing that would be nice to have, if you have a remote release, like this, use it uh, so that you don't shake the camera. Otherwise, you can just use the timer, you know, your auto 10 second or two second timer, um, so that when you press the shutter button, the camera's not bouncing around after it's already auto focused. Um, but ideally, you have a remote release. Um, but again, it's not required. So, um, what we're going to do is uh, step one is I always take a picture of just my hand, uh, just so that when I'm looking at these photos on Lightroom, I can tell. Come on. There we go. My hand should be in that one. Nope. There we go. Um, yeah. I'll be able to tell um, which one, where I started, uh, where the test shots end and the real shots begin. Um, so now I'm going to go in to the menu, find my uh, autofocus compensator, which is here. Sorry if you can't read that. There we go. There we go, that's much better. And I'm going to set this all the way down to minus 10. And I'll press OK to save it. OK again. This is just for Pentax. I mean, Nikon and Canon users, I'm sure you have something similar. Um, and now I'm just going to look through the viewfinder. Yep, I'm still centered in there. And so now I'm going to take a test shot. And I'm going to use my remote release. So halfway down to focus. And click. OK. That's minus 10. Now I'm going to go back into the menu 
and I'm going to go up, and I'm going to do minus 8. I do two steps at a time, uh, just so that I only ever have to do this once. I don't have to keep, you know, going back and forth between Lightroom and my camera. So again, focus. And shoot. Alright, let's go back. And I think you can see where this is going. Uh, change it to minus 6. And so I just do this all the way up to plus 10. Right, so that's quite a bunch, but not too bad. All right. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do all the rest of these shots, and then I'll load it into Lightroom, and we'll see what it looks like. See you in a second. Okay. Hey guys, I'm back. And here we are in Lightroom. So here's my test shot. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention uh, that you really should do uh, is between every shot, or before every shot, uh, manually adjust the focus yourself of your lens to just something horribly out of focus. And that way it'll force the camera to really fully refocus every single time. So, you know, you take a shot, you manually adjust the focus of the lens to, you know, 10 meters or something so that it's just completely blurry. And then you adjust the AF adjustment, and then you refocus, and that'll force the thing to refocus. So, let's go ahead and delete this uh, test shot. And here we have all of our test shots. Remember, this one was minus 10 autofocus compensation. This was minus 8, minus 6, 4, 2, here's 0. And then we have positive 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Um, I go in two stopping ruins because it's, there's no reason not to, you know. Um, if I find that there's two and, you know, it would be right, perfect if it were right between them, I can just pick the odd number. So first we're going to just quick uh, fix up these photos a little bit. Adjust the white balance, um, increase the exposure and the contrast, just so that we can see exactly what's going on. Uh, remember, they don't, remember, they don't need to be perfect photos. They just need to, uh, they just need to show what's in and out of focus. So I'm going to sync all that. Yeah, I'll just sync everything. That's fine. Okay. Um, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the two extremes. So here's, and you have to do this at 100%, otherwise it's not going to work. Right? So this might not look too bad. Doesn't look too bad to me. This is minus 10, remember. So let's just look at the left side of minus 10 so you can see the difference. So this is the left-hand side. Remember, this is the part of the card that's bent backwards. So this is getting farther away over here. Now let's look at it, the corresponding part of the photo, when we've set it to plus 10. So unfortunately, Lightroom doesn't let you look at both at the same time. But if we just drag the photo over, and we compare the two, yeah, you can see, um, negative 10 focuses farther back. Remember, we were always actually telling the camera to focus here. Um, so this is just showing you, you know, where it focused. So here's, remember, here's minus 10, and here's plus 10. Now let's look at the other side. This is the part of the card that's towards us. Drag this over. And so this is minus 10. This is plus 10. See how this part is in focus here on plus 10? While on minus 10, that part is definitely not in focus. See the difference? It's not a huge difference here, uh, especially because this is a very good lens. And because our aperture is just, you know, so small, and we're at a 200 millimeter lens that's just razor thin anyway. Um, but for some lenses, this makes a huge difference. Uh, and once you get to longer focal distances, like 10 feet away, this could, you know, maybe make like a foot worth of difference in your focusing. Um, and there's a big difference between, even, even between focusing six inches in front of someone's face and focusing on their face. So um, this is a big deal. So you can see that it definitely makes a difference. Now our goal is to find the setting where the amount of the left-hand side in focus is equal to the amount of the right-hand side in focus. Right, because that'll mean that we focus directly on the center. Um, maybe, actually, it should be, um, there should be a little bit more of the back in focus, just because of the way focusing works. Um, because, you know, when you focus 10 feet away, you get everything from, for example, 9 feet to 12 feet, right? Um, so, you want a little bit more in the back. But most of all, you want the center sharp. That's the most important part. Um, this lens is actually pretty good, and the center's sharp in most of these. Um, except, you know, here you can see that the center is definitely blurry compared to this area here. Um, 
So we definitely don't want to go with this one. Um, but for some lenses, this is a huge deal, and it, you can immediately tell uh, that it definitely focuses way differently. So actually, I've looked at these, and it turns out that the, uh, the default value of zero is pretty good. Um, it's a little bit close. Uh, like, there's a little bit more on the front than the back when it should be the other way around. Um, so I'm going to tell it to actually focus back by maybe two. Let's look. So remember, this is minus two here. If this is zero, then this is minus two. So we've got a little bit in focus on the front. A little bit in the back. Actually, it could probably go to minus four, to be honest. Or even minus six. Minus 10 is a little much. Actually, minus 10 isn't even too bad. I might go with minus 8 for this lens. Um, but either way, it's not, it's not too bad because the, uh, the center is in focus. But like I said, for some lenses, that is most definitely not the case. Um, for example, my 15 millimeter Pentax lens, the center is not even close to in focus until you get to, I think, let me look at my notebook. Yeah, I need to go to plus 10 on my 15 millimeter lens for the center to be in focus, let alone for it to be perfect. So occasionally this makes a big difference. So it won't make a difference for all your lenses, but hopefully you found this useful and maybe it'll help you. Uh, maybe there's a lens that you think should be a little bit sharper. Maybe this is the trick and maybe this will uh, make it happen for you. So cool. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, post them in the comments or find me on Twitter or something. Thanks for watching.